Hello and welcome to your weekly juice. Tips and advice on how to boost your confidence, conquer self-doubt, and keep you pumped all week. I'm Louisa Jewell, author of Wire Your Brain for Confidence, The Science of Conquering Self-Doubt, and continuing on with my theme of how to raise confident children. Today, I want to talk about how can you move your child from a pessimistic mindset to an optimistic mindset. So this is the work of Dr. Martin Seligman, who's considered the founding father of positive psychology. And what he discovered is that what separates pessimists from optimists is really what he calls their explanatory style. And what that is, is that's our children's learned or habitual way of explaining bad events in their lives. So if something goes wrong, if they explain it in a certain way, we can see signs of pessimism, or we can, see, we, we can see signs of optimism. So what we want to do is we want to train our children to have a more optimistic, explanatory style. And if we can do that, and we can shift their attention towards that, then they'll be more optimistic going into things, and being more optimistic going into things will make them much more confident that they can actually succeed in any given situation. So that's what we want. Now we don't want our kids to be optimistic about everything. That's not what this exercise is about. It's really about giving them another tool that when they're not feeling confident, that if they can boost their own optimism, then we can see them engaging in things and moving towards things and trying new things with greater ease. All right, so let's take a look at the three elements of an optimistic explanatory style. So what Martin Seligman talks about in the, the three elements is first of all, when kids see things as more permanent, so now something has gone wrong, they've had an adversity. If they think that this is a permanent thing in their lives, this is always happening all the time, or they label themselves as this permanent way of being, then they're going to be more pessimistic. So I'll give you an example. When my daughter comes to me and says, oh, mom, I'm so bad at math, then she's kind of labeling herself in this permanent way that she's permanently bad at math. If I can get her to see that actually what's just occurred, so maybe she just didn't do as well on a math test, if I can get her to see it as more temporary rather than permanent, then I can shift her from being pessimistic to optimistic about her own math abilities. So if she says to me, Mom, you know, I did terrible on this test, I'm so bad at math, then I can say, well, are you bad at math? Because really in the other two tests, you did actually pretty good. So I think it might just be this particular test. So I can move her from, it's not that you're bad at math, it's just this particular one, and that makes it more temporary. Now, that also makes it less pervasive. When she says, oh, I'm so bad at math, again, she's making it bad at every single math test that she's ever done, or math in general. She's making it bigger than it actually is. And again, if I can bring to her attention that she did well in the other two tests and that it was just that specific test, then again, I'm moving her from being pessimistic to optimistic. I'm training her for next time on how she can think better about a disappointing mark that she got. And finally, I want her to feel less personal about it and not as personal. Now, in this particular case, if she doesn't do very well um, at a math test, we can take a look and say, well, maybe these are new concepts that you've never tried before. Maybe calculus is a little bit more um, complicated. You know, maybe there's some things we have to look at. It's not you, it's not that you don't know how to do it, it's just you're not there yet. And so let's take a look at some other things we can do to boost your abilities in math in this particular area. So if I can again get her to move away from, oh, it must be all about me, there must be something wrong with me, and get her to say that, no, you're just not there yet, you just haven't learned it yet, you haven't developed it yet, but you will get there, 
then I can make it not as personal to her and she feels that there's something she can be doing to actually improve her math score and her math abilities. So, in a nutshell, we want to move kids from feeling it's not always going to be there, it's not everywhere, and it's not always about you. There's not, not always that there's something wrong with you, all right? Uh, we, we never want to tell kids there's something wrong with them, right? There's always something that they can do about it. And we want to move them towards saying it's temporary, it's just this one area, and you know what? Sometimes it's not always about you. Sometimes there are other external factors that we can tap into to improve your abilities. So I hope this tip was helpful. If it was, please share it with your friends. And if you want more tips on how to boost your confidence, go to louisajewel.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'll be back next week with your weekly juice. And in the meantime, go kick some butt. All right, see you next time.